everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I just like to I just like to pray as we start out this morning. So, Father God, we just thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for a beautiful day outside, Lord, and a, and a beautiful group of faces this morning that have come to learn more about you and specifically today learn more about Zambia. So, Father, we just thank you for Jesus. We thank you that Jesus makes it worthwhile for us to devote ourselves to both local and foreign missions. And Father, I just I pray a blessing over this class and over Park City's Baptist as they are uh, reaching out to spread the kingdom and the gospel message throughout the world. So we love you. We thank you for Jesus, and it's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So, my name is Taylor. This is Amanda, and this is Lily, our little African-American. <laughs> we're really excited to be here with you all this morning. Uh, we're, we're coming out of kind of a whirlwind five weeks of rest slash recuperation slash restock and, uh, and then getting stuff over to Zambia. So we've been with the Ministry Family Legacy Missions International, which is based out of Irving for about two and a half years. And we've been in Zambia specifically uh, for a little over a year now. And so um, this is just our time of rest and furlough. And so we'd love to share with you a little bit about what we do. So some of the conversation today might be kind of 30,000 foot snapshot of what our world is, what our ministry does. <laughs> And then uh, we'd love to answer any and all questions you guys have. So, yeah, hit the lights. So I'll tell you a little bit about Zambia first off. So, actually, why don't we sit down so they can see just a little bit. So, uh, Zambia is located in South Central Africa. It's roughly the size of Texas. It's smaller than Texas. There's nothing bigger than Texas. Um, the major industries there are agriculture and copper. Um, Zambia had a big boom in the 1970s as copper prices shot through the roof, uh, as about a third of the world's known copper reserves are in the copper belt in north of Zambia. The capital city of Zambia is Lusaka. That's where we live. It's here in the south central area of Lusaka, right here on the Zambezi River. It has about three and a half million people. So of the 13 million people in the country, We've got a pretty massive chunk there within a stone's throw of us. The local language is called Nyanja. It's like ninja with a nya in the front. Um, and it is uh, one of 72 languages throughout the country. So uh, those are all tribal languages. So just when you think you've got it figured out, you can travel an hour north and no one's going to know what you're talking about. So that's the geographic, that's the CIA World Book version. Our world of Zambia is a little bit different. So there's 13 million people. Half of them are under the age of 16. Uh, the average life expectancy in Zambia is 38 years. And it, so who's above 38? Don't be smart. I didn't ask you to tell me. Um, it has the fifth highest death rate in the world. Uh, of the 6.5 million children in Zambia, which is half the country, more than a million of them are orphans. Now, orphan has a couple of different definitions. The way we view it is there are single orphans who have lost one parent. There's double orphans who've lost two parents. There's cultural orphans who've been abandoned by their families. And then there's serial <coughs> orphans who both parents die, they stay with an aunt who dies. They stay with the grandmother who dies. Um, in the country of 70% unemployment, where 86% of the population lives on less than a dollar a day, there's not a lot of hope for our kids. Um, until, the, until they encounter the gospel. So I want to tell you about the three main ministries of Family Legacy, the three ways that we are reaching these kids. So the first is Camp Life. Uh, Camp Life is the program that my wife Amanda and I visited in 2010 before Lily was around. Um, and it's a, an opportunity, it's a gospel-centered evangelism camp where we bring about 750 Americans over, about 110 at a time, for a week, for seven weeks through June and July. So it is like vacation Bible school on steroids. So what we do is for each American, we give them 10 to 12 kids, and uh, they get to spend the week teaching them the gospel, uh, sitting one-on-one -on -one with them what we call blessing times, to hear their stories firsthand. Uh, and what it does, it allows us, over the course of the summer, to engage and meet eight to 10,000 kids. So just to give you some perspective on that, um, 10,000 kids is roughly 1% of the population of orphans in Zambia. So even though it's a sizable dent, it's still pretty small. So, uh, so God willing, we'll be able to continue to expand this program over the years. 
So after you've come to Camp Life and you have met 10 to 12 amazing children uh, and God has just broken your heart for them and their, their lack of opportunity in the country, you come back and you become advocates for those kids. So the Father's Heart Sponsorship Program, as I know many of you guys are involved in, is a program that allows us to, to provide private Christian education to as many as 6,500 kids throughout the city. The exciting thing is, since camp is going to be starting in just a couple of months, we expect to see that number even grow to 10,000 kids. So those are kids who are in and around the slum communities of Lusaka, who are going from being a burden to their family. I mean, imagine the scenario that you're one of four kids, which is just below the national average of size of family. You're one of four kids, and both of your parents die of AIDS. So you go and stay with an aunt who has four kids, whose husband has died of AIDS and neither of your parents could afford you before you even started. So uh, that's the predicament that we find ourselves in. So with these kids, they're getting top-rate private Christian education from degreed national Zambians who also love the Lord. And then as much of their curriculum is based not only in the education with Zambian curriculum, but also with discipleship and mentoring in the scriptures. So it's very much working together. It's very exciting. So we have about 200 field workers who live in and around the slums. And they're actually the ones who identify these children who come to our camp program because they, we tell them, go find us 100 kids from your area. And so what they do is they go hang out by the trash dump to see what kid comes back every day. Or hang out outside the bars to see what kids are sleeping. Things like that. What's exciting about our schools is that we really start putting an emphasis on education because we saw how crucial it was, their success. and. Um, you know, we were trying to do the best we can with um, providing quality education, but then we started to see that when they took their national exams, um, they were getting the highest scores in the country. And so that was just an awesome confirmation that this is, this is, this is right, and the Lord's leading us in the right direction. So. Yeah. Um, so we've had Camp Life, and Camp Life is where we meet the children, and then they, the ambassadors come back here and meet you guys and tell you all the stories of the kids. And then you decide to take them in under your wing financially to give them opportunity. Now, for the worst of the worst cases, so before we get to that, family legacy, the purpose of us is to reconcile the concept of family there. There is no family unit in Zambia because you don't have enough pieces that live long enough for you to have a cohesive family unit. So what we're seeking to do is to reconcile that idea of family. And so in a family where the child is viewed as a burden, they're only a burden most of the time because they are, doggone it, they want food and they want schooling and they want shoes and they become a burden financially. And so what the sponsorship program allows us to do is to leave the children in that home and become a blessing to that family. Now for those cases that are dangerous and that the children need to be removed, we have the Tree of Life Children's Village. It's located about 15 miles east of town, out in the bush. We have uh, around 200 acres out there where we have been slowly but surely since 2009 building out a children's village. Now, calling it an orphanage wouldn't do it justice because the purpose in it is, again, to reconcile the idea of family. So we have homes that have 12 kids and two moms. 12 kids and two moms. And we currently have built 26 homes. We're under construction with seven. And by the end of this next year, we'll have 50 homes, which are housing 600 children every night. Uh, these are kids who are in our full-time care. So we are the ones who potty train them. We're the ones who take them to the doctor. Uh, we're the ones who disciple them and bring them to church. So it's, it's quite the lofty position that we find ourselves in. But at the end of next year, we expect to see not only 600 kids living full-time with us, but the completion of our school, which will house 1,000 students, uh, a trades program for 300 kids, for older kids who don't qualify for upper level education in college, so learning mechanics, carpentry, things like that. A Bible college and a medical clinic that will see over 36,000 people a month. So it will be a massive, massive undertaking. Uh, and then just to cast the vision even further for you, this will be the first of 12 villages in all of Zambia. So our ministry has, called, has been called exclusively to Zambia. Um, our, our, our director jokes and says, since he's one of the voting board members, <coughs> until he dies, it requires a unanimous vote. And so we will be only in Zambia. Because we, we've even seen there's enough work in the capital today to keep us busy. And so uh, our goal is to see Zambia transform one child at a time. So I want to show you guys a quick video. And I'll show you just a little bit about 
what it means when our kids come to the tree of life. My name was Matthew. My name was Penny. My name was Mutani. My name was Timbo. Names. For many of us, they carry little significance, often chosen simply for their popularity. In Zambia, they carry heritage. But what if that heritage is death, witchcraft, or poverty? For an orphan in the slums of Lusaka, a name can direct their destiny. The name is Tumbe. It means graveyard. Masozi means tears. My name was Azizi. My name was Gongwale. My name was Asabi. My name was Nora. Tree of Life Village represents many things for the children who live here. Shelter, <coughs> safety, love. But what it most often means is a new beginning, one which leaves behind the abuse and neglect, the curses and the labels, and instead embraces the destiny God has for them. And a few things symbolize this change, this new path, like a new name. It's no requirement. Many simply request it, because the future they see looks nothing like the past they've lived. Now my name is Naftali. Now my name is Blessing. My name was Mwewa. Now my name is Jonathan. Now my name is Gibi. <laughs> now my name is Ruth. Now my name is David. My name was Paulina. Now my name is Blessing. My name was Sandra. Now my name is Joy. Now my name is Hope. <laughs> now my name is John. So that's what that's the transformation that we have the opportunity to see with these kids, and it really comes down to it's it's not that the Americans are are saving them, and it's not that money is saving them. It's that they truly view, and we pound home daily, that the Lord is saving them. The Lord, the Lord is rescuing these kids, um, and so <coughs> Scripture tells us that He will not leave us as orphans; He will come to us. And so. That's what these kids are learning, and it's incredibly exciting. So, um, so that, that's what our ministry does. And so obviously that is what our main focus is, but part of living life is, is ministering to those people around you as well. I mean, I'm guessing that some of y'all went to your local Starbucks or things like that this morning, where you see the same people and you minister to them on a daily basis. We were naive to think that we, for some reason, <coughs> wouldn't be doing that in Zambia. But as a result of being there and trying to be intentional, we've had opportunities to meet some incredible people, and we've kind of stumbled into some new ministries just as a family. Um, to give one example, so I, uh, one of my roles with our ministry is over procurement, which sounds pretty boring. Uh, I've grown to love it. But what it's allowed me access to do is to go in and sit down in front of businessmen, none of whom are American, none of whom are Zambian, um, none of whom are Christians. And so the exciting thing is, because they aren't living in Texas where they have to put up a defense the moment they know a Christian is walking through the door, they just think it's cool that I decided to move over there and to help kids from a humanitarian perspective. So um, I had an excellent opportunity the day before I left. I had a meeting with three Palestinians who sell me concrete. Uh, and there's a, uh, a guy from China. He's the only one. The country sent him here. He's by himself. Um, he knows nothing of Jesus. Uh, and he's the one who sells me cement. Um, there's a guy named Rani who is from India, who is a really neat man, loves his family well, and he's a Sikh. 
Um, the amazing thing is that God's given us unprecedented access to these men, specifically, um, and they have been enamored with what we're doing and the small part that they can play in helping to transform Zambia. So the Lord has given tons of opportunities for us to minister to people and to evangelize folks. So I'd love for Amanda to come and just talk a little bit about some of, uh, some of our life there. So I've brought some things for you guys to pass around. Um, one is a Nyanja Bible, which I am, haven't made much of a dent in yet. Um, but you guys are welcome to check it out. And then just for, for grin's sake, I also brought our visa and my driving license. Now I'll issue a warning on this. Um, I kind of looked like I had had my head shaved the day I got this picture. That's because I did. So, um, so don't be frightened when you see that picture. <laughs> and also, just for the record, there is no marital strife. Uh, we don't have our rings on because Africa takes a pounding on your rings. And we just so happen to have a friend in the jewelry business who has been helping us out with that over the last couple of days, getting us ready to go. I know, who could that be? Well, I just, I guess a little bit about our life there. Um, uh, the Lord just really provided in so many ways, and so one thing that stands out in the last few months especially is just how he's provided friendships, and um, friendships within our ministry with the people we work with, and just unity, but also friendships outside of that, and kind of like Taylor's gotten to know some of the businessmen that he works with, I've gotten to know just other moms um, that maybe are doing missions, aren't doing missions, but just those friendships have been such a blessing um, to have something similar to what I would have here, where we can do little even play groups, um, once a week or go out to coffee and so that's been a big blessing um, to me and an encouragement. Um, some are strong believers and um, then some don't know the Lord and so just similar to what Taylor was saying, it's been neat for me too to go in with a mindset of how we would be serving or what our mission would be and then to see the Lord say, well yes, but look, like there's all sorts of people <laughs> that need Jesus here too and so um, that's been just a real blessing in the last few months. And um, I, oh, you're going to show some pictures? Oh, sure. these are just uh, some pictures of little sashes for our life. This is when rainy season started and the waters rose within a few hours. And we were preparing for the worst in case it came in the house. So Lily's standing on her big bags of rice. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we but, didn't have sandbags on hand. We had bags of rice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, with our folding tables up against the window. So that was just kind of odd. And then it rose even more. So Taylor and the gardener got out there and started punching holes through our center block walls, trying to let, to let the, water the water run out. So and yes, that is a full size Zambia. Oh my God. Uh, so <laughs> That's Chanda. <laughs> So I've got the scars on my head to prove that they didn't design Africa for people like me. <laughs> in the same skirt. That's the like, outside of the back of our house. <laughs> so, and I mentioned that was our gardener with Taylor. It's kind of bizarre to have a housekeeper and gardeners in our complex, but um, it's super helpful. But also, it's just neat to be able to build relationships with them, too. And I think we have some pictures of our housekeeper, Hilda. She's so sweet. She has five children of her own. One of her daughters is still at school in that picture. And then um, she has a granddaughter that live with her and her husband. And uh, just being able to minister to their family and love on them and maybe bless them in some ways that they um, would normally be able to be blessed. This is just Lily and I will take her home every now and then and we'll just hang out so they were jumping on the bed. And <laughs> she wanted to give us a tour of the house. So um, that's just been a neat ministry in itself. And then uh, these are just some pictures driving around town. This is so typical. You'll see people selling all sorts of stuff just on the side of the road. Um, people toting all sorts of stuff on their bikes. People are very resourceful there. Um, just some different shots. That's the U.S. Embassy. We, that's looking to the left down our street, and then if you look to the right, you go down a hill, and we live right down there. Here. <laughs> Some of the advertisements, it's just, it's funny. We kind of get used to it, but then when I really think about it, uh, we see things that aren't normal to hear, and it's kind of funny. These are minibuses, like taxis, that you see everywhere. The drivers are very aggressive. They're urban assault. <laughs> but, I mean, people, when I am frustrated with my car for some reason, I have to stop and remember, wow, I have a car. It's just me and Lily in here. And, I mean, people get around these minibuses, they're just packed in. That's on a Sunday. They're waiting for, you know, take people all about town. 
this is stopped in an intersection. We'll typically have people selling things, just walking past our car all the time. And then, especially on Sundays in this area of town, you'll have a lot of um, children <coughs> begging, asking for money or food, and then there will be blind parents or grandparents with them. <coughs> I don't know. It's hard because you see it all the time, and especially at first it was hard. I thought, gosh, I just, you know, there's so much need, and you feel bad saying, you know, I don't have... Um, or I don't need more fruit or tomatoes. But then I just realized, you know, the Lord's intimately acquainted with each person that I'm coming in contact with. And I don't have to, you know, it's not up to me to, to save them in that moment or help them. And so that's just, um, I just remember that he sent us there and we're doing what he's called to do. And it is hard, but um, I know that he's watching out for all of them. So I found comfort in that. This is driving into town. This is Kafue Road. Going in town, this is kind of like it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> and then turn around and go the other way out into the bush, and our church is out there. I think we have a few pictures of our church too. There's um, One of the multiple mosques. mosques around town. You'll hear the call to prayer if you're shopping in that area. These are some of the government buildings. I don't know specifically what they are. Parliament. And there's That's the U.S. Embassy, the bright beacon on a hill. Yeah, it's huge. And there, you make a left around an S-curve, and we're over there, our houses. And this is going to our church. It's Bayabout College. It's a, a week boarding school. Um, they board during the week, and um, we use one of their buildings for church. And there's our friends at church. And Taylor also leads worship there every other week. Him and another guy take turns. And um, So that's been another way that the Lord's called us to be dark. Time in town, so it's been a huge blessing. After church, everyone just gathers out on the grass and has uh, tea and coffee, no matter how hot it is. They still have hot tea and hot coffee, but it's a fun time to fellowship. No, it's no interesting. Ice tea. People no aren't ice tea. in a hurry to rush off the next thing. That is the next thing, just being there and just Ooh. fellowshipping. And it's funny. The first time we went and had lunch or a braai, <laughs> they called a braai a barbecue at someone's house, we thought, oh, great, we'll just go back to church. And we looked up and it was like six o'clock and they were bringing out another meal and it was just nice. We just realized this is what they were doing today. They were just resting and just enjoying each other's company. It wasn't just one thing on the list. So that's been kind of a nice shift in perspective. These are, I'm sure y'all have heard from Lori and Kevin about Blessing House, the house that our family got to help open at Tree of Life. And these are some of our kids. It's so sweet to be able to um, just pop in and see them, spend time with them. There's so many kids in our ministry. It's a little overwhelming sometimes because they all know you. Mm -hmm. Uncle T, Uncle T. And um, I, you can't possibly know all of their names or stories. And so it's been so neat to be able to just jump in with these kids. They're, they become part of our family. Mommy. <laughs> <laughs> And they count us just as much family. I mean, when Lily's birthday came around, they all, you know, we have birthday cards for baby Lily. And I'm where's sister. our sister Lily? It's really sweet. So we have to, when we, when we get together, we always have to take some snaps. And <laughs> it's fun to see their little personalities come out. <laughs> and it's amazing. It's just, when I, when I am with them, it's just such a reminder of, why it's called the tree of life because I remember when these kids moved in and there were so you could just see the weight on them you could see it in their eyes um, just this heaviness and uh, it's just it's so hard to see so much going on in such a little one and then to see even a week later even a month later and then the huge change after being there for almost coming up on a year just seeing that spunkiness and them just just life coming out of them um, it's it's amazing to see that transformation. So Amanda, did they live there until they're 18, or how does that work? You know, we're just we're just now hitting that point as a ministry. We're having some of our older kids get to that point. So Taylor might be able to share more. We yep. haven't that hasn't been a normal part of the ministry. Our yet. oldest kids, so the, the village was founded in 2009, so our oldest kids are just now getting to grade 10, 11. Um, and the neat thing is that because they've been brought up through our system, which has been bolstered by American teachers, uh, on some of those big grade, the big tests, like the grade 7, the grade 9, the grade 12, um, our kids are scoring in the very top percentile of the country. Um, so the exciting thing is that our kids who are making it through the program are, are going to have every opportunity afforded to them 
through our ministry to go to college and to, to be able to further their education. Now you hit a point where it's, you have a 20 year old child who is still on grade nine. And that starts to get tough. And a lot of that comes from them missing school when they were a child for four, five, six years. So what we do is we're, we're, we're starting to see that we will work with that child to figure out what is that child hoping to do because it's going to take a while for them to get through grade 12. So we'll look into doing a trades program of some kind with them. And so obviously working with them, deciding what they want to do. But, but our goal is that these kids will realize that God put them in Zambia to help Zambia. I mean, we are all for the idea of adoption. We think adoption is a beautiful picture of the gospel. For our ministry it would completely distort the message that we're telling the kids of God put you here for a reason. God rescued you to save Zambia. Um, and so, so for our kids, what we are enjoying seeing is them getting older, them getting smarter, them getting ambitious, and then to transition them into whatever is next to them. We would absolutely love it if they ended up after university coming to work for our ministry. Because I mean, I can't think of a better way to disciple a child than to say, hey, I know where you came from. I live in your house. I came here when I was six. I mean, it's, it's a really incredible picture. So it's a great question, though. Great is question. college free? College is not free. Um, college is something that our ministry, <clears throat> since we're building a Bible college, um, we'll, we'll be able to free to an extent in that we'll have to have operations costs and things like that. But the way the government works is that government schooling is free. But you have to have a uniform, you have to have school shoes, I think you guys can remember that from this last year. Um, you have to have all these things, um, while at the same time you have to have enough security at home that your parents don't need you to be selling at the market or things like that. So there is an inherent cost, uh, and the government doesn't really start to provide resources for your education until you're in secondary school. In their mind, it's if you can make it until then, you're worth investing in. Um, and so, but college is not part of that process. <coughs> Great question. So, that's pretty much our spiel. Um, we, you know, the Lord told us uh, before we were coming, um, that he didn't, there wasn't like a sky writer or something like that. We just felt an extreme peace that God was telling us to go to Zambia. And at the time, he had given us the idea of a year. We didn't know what a year meant. A year could have meant that, hey, it's going to be awful, but I need you to stick it out for a year. Or we, we just didn't know. Um, but we've now come to realize that really he was saying this year is going to be a formative year for you to develop relationships, for you to see what it is to plant roots in the mission that he's given our family. Um, and so we're very much back there. And we are, for lack of better word, there indefinitely until God tells us to come back or kills us. And so um, in the meantime, we're just we're absolutely loving what God's doing there. Um, I know y'all have been praying and praying for our family and just protection and provision and that's been so evident. We we can just feel that people are praying for us and just um just ask the Lord on our behalf for all those things. And just a few examples that stand on my mind from the last year that it's like there's no mistake is like I was talking about friendships and before I got plugged into that group of friends, the you know, we had met some girls from church, but they're South Africans, so there's that cultural gap. It's just it's not just like sitting down and talking with someone from here because you're wondering, am I using the right word? What does that mean? And um, so I, I had some friends, but they were also on the other side of town. I didn't have a car. So I was just telling Taylor one Saturday, I said, you know, I, I'm thankful for the friendships I have, but it's just it's such effort to get together. You have to make plans to get a ride and then like the cultural gaps I was talking about. And then, you know, we'll get together and they'll have their nannies there. And so the kids will play with the nannies and the moms will be in the other room. And for me, that was just kind of odd. I was like, oh, but I'm used to being right there with Lily. And so just these things, it was kind of like I was saying, if we were in Capel, you know, I have all these church friends and we're just getting the age where I could go to play group and go to the library and story time. All these things are coming out of my mouth. And the next, I was, the Lord was like, oh, okay, I hear you. Because the next day at church, a girl that had been going to our church for a few months, and I don't you know how I never saw her, because our church is not very big. She just came up to me and said, oh, hi, I'm Bonnie. You know, I I, I saw, you know, I guess she knew that we were from the States. It was pretty obvious when we started talking. But um, she said, oh, well, you know, we're from the States, and where do you live? Oh, we live, we live two minutes from there. And, oh, you don't drive? Well, you know, call me, and I can come pick you up. And, well, you know, my friends and I, we have this play group. And, you know, it's, and she said this. She was like, you know, a lot of people, like, bring their natives, you know, but this is just moms and kids. Like, we just wanted a play group for just the moms and the kids. And I was like, it was like the Lord was like, no. And it was just like she was saying exactly what I had said. It was amazing. So just times like that when the Lord has been like, do you not see I'm taking care of you? It's a real blessing.
blessing. And then with a car, you know, if we were going to settle in for longer, it would be really nice for me to have a mode of transportation. And so we've been praying about that. You know, it's hard to think. Lord, I was thinking a moped. But yeah. <laughs> we're going to, you know, put down such, you know, a large amount of money for something like that. We're not sure what our long-term plans are. And so it came up when I was here in November that Taylor um, found out a family that was there for seven years with the CDC was moving back, and they had a car. It was in great condition. They took really good care of it. It had American tires. It was a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> for those bumpy roads. <laughs> and so I was like, I really think we should do yeah. this. And I was like, well, you know, I had a piece that, you know, I should just trust your judgment, but still that large amount of money. And then the next day, I ran into someone, and they just said, you know, I just, Here's just an extra blessing that we were not expecting, and it was more than the cost of the car. And so things like that, again, where the Lord's just like, what were you saying you needed? Okay. And um, it's just, it's, it's neat. I know y'all are praying, and so I just want to share some specific examples where we went, what? I mean, we see amazing work in the kids' lives every day, but then to see the Lord like, well, I'm, I'm taking care of you too, don't yeah. forget. So Absolutely. your prayers are being answered. So thank Absolutely. You. Well, and we are so very appreciative of all the prayers that you guys send our way. We really do we really do feel the Lord's blessing from y'all's prayers. And so, um, I don't know, I, I don't think I had ever really experienced what that feels like to have a core base yeah. praying for you and the mission that you're on. Um, but, but we felt that we know that it's very real and that God's doing that. So we're eternally grateful uh, and very appreciative. So, um, yeah. What's coming up this next year? What's on the agenda? Uh, Okay, I'll try to give you like the 30 second commercial because I do want to get, let y'all get to your program. But um, so two years ago, we realized that we needed to start educating students and educating them well. So out of nowhere, we decided, well, the way we're going to do that is to start schools. So we have uh, built out 18 brand new schools throughout the slums of Lusaka. Um, the way we did that, because property is not easy to get, it's pretty packed in there is that we go to the largest building in the area, which is a bar. Uh, and so we'll go and buy a bar, we'll renovate it, and then all of a sudden the place that was the root of destruction is now becoming a place of life within the community. So most of what our focus over this next year will be based out of our schools, the Lifeway Christian Academies. Um, from there, like I said, we'll, we're educating currently 6,500 kids a day, um, all of which we are feeding at least one meal to. So we feed lunch to all of our kids, uh, and then together we, with all of our kids at the Tree of Life, we are feeding them five meals a day. Uh, so three main meals and two snacks, and they're receiving over 2,500 calories a day to combat their malnutrition. So when you ask what's coming down the pipe, uh, we have camp in two months, and camp will bring in a ton of kids into our program. Somewhere between 3,500 and 4,000 kids will be added to our program. Uh, and then continuing to bolster our Christian education and our feeding programs to make sure those kids get the nutrition they need so that, that way the antiretroviral treatments that they have uh, for HIV and AIDS will, will become effective. Yeah. So, any other last questions? The uh, high uh, adult mortality rate, is that largely AIDS related? It is, it is. Um, and it's AIDS and some complication of. So it will be AIDS plus TB, AIDS plus meningitis, something of that nature. Mm -hmm. Is Islam the predominant religion, I'm sure? And, and is there you know, tolerance of It's an interesting place because Zambia calls itself a Christian nation. Um, around 85% of the country claims Christianity. But it's a very strange blend of tribalism and Christianity. So there's a concept in the religious world, you know, you have monotheistic, polytheistic, and then animistic is really where their tribal cultures come from. And that's the idea that Jesus is of equal strength, value, and importance as the devil and demons, and so that both have to be appeased. And so it's a very distorted view of the gospel. It's a very works-based, very non-grace type perspective. Uh, and so it's, it's interesting because... <coughs> The Muslims are almost more receptive to our message than a lot of the Christians that we're meeting and working with. Um, and so I would say that roughly 15% of the country is Muslim, and they're all concentrated in a specific area where I happen to have chosen to buy most of our stuff. Um, and so, so yeah, so it, it's really it's a two-front type approach. Great question. Your mom stepped out, so I'm going to ask this question. <laughs> um, do y'all ever feel, in, is there any like, violence or any kind of threats? You know, kind of Zambia is a very, it's a very peaceful country. Um, 
the United States chose it as their Southern African Regional Hub. So that embassy you saw is to cover everything sub-Saharan. So it's a safe enough country that they deem it appropriate to send a whole bunch of employees here. Um, we have never really felt in I, danger. I really feel like it's like living here. Like there's areas you don't go. There's areas you don't go at night. There's just precautions you take. I mean, we always lock our doors when we're driving around. Because there are many people that come up and try to open your back door. It's happened to him multiple yeah. times. But I mean, They're opportunistic yeah. criminals. They'll snatch and grab. But you just, you just are kind of aware, and I don't drive around mm -hmm. nervous all the time by any yeah. means. Yeah. yeah. And even though there's corruption with the police force and things like that, um, it's mostly petty stuff like getting pulled over and then telling you that you've perpetrated some kind of a, a crime on the road, and, and lo and behold, they just want you to pay cash, and they don't want to give you a receipt for it. So we experience that pretty often. Mm -hmm. yeah, we, we don't feel don't safe. Have. Does most everyone speak English? Yeah, English is the business language, having been uh, a former English colony. Um, Zambia used to be northern Rhodesia. Um, and so English is the business language. We drive on the wrong side of the road there, um, which has made it a little bit interesting coming back, especially driving a Suburban. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so it's, it, it's, it's easy from a business perspective for us to connect with people. Any other questions? What do you miss most about living there? Family. Just being able to like run over right, or drop in or you know, someone's having a birthday, we'll be there. So that, that is by far the... And contrasting that, probably the biggest shock coming back is the availability. Um, and that's not like in a bitterness type thing, like, oh, you have so much, you don't know it. It's like Amanda went to Walmart, she's like, there's 29 different goldfish to choose from. <laughs> I don't even know where to start. We don't even have goldfish there. So, so that's where it gets interesting. Yeah. yeah. But even that, it's, it hasn't been too bad. Yeah. We, we've really felt blessed by the simplicity of life that we've been able to achieve there. And it's out of necessity. Um, but, uh, but it's, you know, eating good food that came out of the ground and um, things like that. Like, it's just, it's been really great for our family. And it's allowed our family our small family unit to, to yeah. become very cohesive because even though we do have friends and we have neighbors that are a little bit too close for comfort, um, we still we still as a family have been able to kind of formulate our own identity. And it's been, you know, if, if, if we end up coming back to the States in even a year or two or three or whatever that might be, we will always look back on this time as being a really kind of a benchmark for our family of seeing the Lord move, responding to a call, and then being able to walk in just a quality of life that he's laid out for us. Yeah. Right. Well, thank you all so much for letting us come and chat. Um, I'm going to have some brochures and things back here, and I'll also I'll put out a stack of my business cards. We would love to just get emails from you guys every once in a while and hear how things are going or be able to send out prayer requests and things like that. So um, we love y'all's class, and we thank y'all very much. Yeah, thank you so much.